All right, we are back. I'm Michael. And I'm Lakia. And this is The, the Voice, Voice of Reason. Reason. Let's get into it. If you ask a disagreeable person what, what he wants, say, or she wants, they'll tell you right away. They, they know. It's like, this is what I want, and this is how I'm going to get it. But agreeable people, especially if they're really agreeable, are so agreeable that they often don't even know what they want. Because they're so accustomed to living for other people and to finding out what other people want and to trying to make them comfortable and so forth that it's harder for them to find a sense of their own desires as they move through life. And that's not, look, there's situations where that's advantageous, but it's certainly not advantageous if you're going to try to uh, forge yourself a career. That just doesn't work at all. And so even though on average men and women don't, it just don't, aren't that much different in terms of their levels of agreeableness by the group. If you go out and you look at the extremes, they're very different. So all of the most agreeable people are women, and all of the most disagreeable people are men. And the thing is, the extremes are often what matter, rather than what's in the middle. And so one of the ways that's reflected in, in society, by the way, is there's way more men in prison. And the best personality predictor of being imprisoned is to be low in agreeableness. It makes you callous. Now you may think, well, what's the opposite of compassion and politeness? And the answer to that is, I think it's best sort of conceptualized as a, as a trading game. So let's say that we're going to play repeated trading games. And if you're very agreeable, then you're going to bargain harder on my behalf than you're going to bargain on your own behalf. Whereas if you're very disagreeable, you're going to do the reverse. You're going to think, I'm in this trading game for me, and you are going to take care of your own interests. Where an agreeable person is going to say, no, no, at best, this is, at, at worst, this has to be 50-50, but I'd like to help you every way I can. One of the things you have to be careful of if you're agreeable is not to be exploited. Because you'll line up to be exploited. And I think the reason for that is because you're wired to be exploited by infants. And so, that just doesn't work so well in that actual world. And one of the things, one of the things that happens very often in psychotherapy, you know, people come to psychotherapy for multiple reasons, but one of them is they often come because they're too agreeable. And so what they get is so-called assertiveness training, although it's not exactly assertiveness that's being trained. What it is is the ability to learn how to negotiate on your own behalf. And one of the things I tell agreeable people... What do you think so far? I think everything he's speaking is facts. I tend to be like super agreeable. Mm -hmm. And I think and at times I felt like I lost myself mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I didn't know what I liked or what I desired. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I'm always trying to like please the other person right you know right. so like i think like yeah i can relate to what he's saying like and it it can become well i'm not that i'm learning to you know move forward from that mindset but yeah it can be miserable <laughs> at times mm. yeah so it's it's harder for you to assert what you want or even to know what you want because right. you're so fixated on what other people want or what other people need that you kind of neglect yourself in mm -hmm, a way. Mm -hmm. So like I read different books like how to be <laughs> more this or more yeah. that. And it's like, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I, assertiveness, it, it helps, mm -hmm. you know, um, because sometimes you don't want to offend people. Sometimes you don't come off a certain type of way, but you need to get this done, mm -hmm. right? You need to push this forward so you have to be assertive in order to get things in life mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. that's why people that are less agreeable tend to be in the higher positions mm -hmm. and um and employ in and in, in places of employment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know anything else you want to add yeah that's it I, I think he's he's a psychologist for a reason because he, he's hitting on some deep stuff oh uh, huh? yeah definitely people especially if they're conscientious is Say what you think. Tell the truth about what you think. There's going to be things you think that you think are nasty and harsh. And they probably are nasty and harsh. But they're also probably true. And you need to bring those up to the forefront and deliver the message. And it's not straightforward at all because agreeable people do not like conflict. Not at all. They smooth the water. You know, and you can see, you can see why that is in accordance with the hypothesis that I've been putting forward. You don't want conflict around infants. It's too damn dangerous. You don't want fights to break out. You don't want anything to disturb the, the relative peace. You know, and if you're also more prone to being hurt physically and perhaps emotionally, you're also maybe loath to engage in the kind of high intensity conflict that will solve problems in the short term. Because a lot of conflict 
It takes a lot of conflict to solve problems in the short term. And, you know, if that can spiral up to where it's dangerous, which it can, if it gets uncontrolled, it might be safer in the short term to keep the water smooth and to not delve into those situations where conflict emerges. The problem with that is it's not a very good medium to long-term strategy, right? Because lots, lots of times there are things you have to talk about because they're not going to go away. And the advantage to having a well-socialized, disagreeable person is that they really don't let much get in their way. So if it's really useful to investigate the viewpoints of people who have opposing views to yours. Because they'll tell you things, not only will they tell you things you don't know, they'll also tell you how to see the world in ways that you don't see it. And they'll also have skills that you don't have, that you could develop. So for example, if you're an introverted person, it's very useful to watch an extroverted person, because the extroverted person has ways of being in the social world that aren't natural to you, that you can use as to improve your toolkit. And if you're disagreeable, one of the best things to do with disagreeable people, especially if that's alienating them from other people, for example, because it can, you know, people treat you like you're a selfish, arrogant son of a, maybe that's because you are. It's like, okay, so what do you do about that? One of the, one of the most uh, promising treatments, let's say, for that is get the person to do something for someone else once a day, just as a practice, and learn how to do it. Maybe you can wake the circuit up, you know, if you think that it's lying dormant in you, which is probably right. You know, I think we have a very wide range of propensities within us. Some are switched on. Genetic propensities. Some are switched on, but I... Okay, we just got to stop it when he's talking because... He kind of folds ideas into other ideas mm -hmm. like seamlessly. So if you don't, if you don't pause it, you're gonna go into a whole another train yeah. of thought. Mm -hmm. What do you think so far? Like I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> in fact, I I pose a question to you. Do you think you're agreeable or you're more disagreeable? I'm more disagreeable than agreeable mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, but I'm I still have traits of agreeableness as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm able to listen. I'm able to hear other people out. You know, of course. It's a it's a spectrum. I hate to use that word, but it's a spectrum <laughs> of agreeableness and disagreeableness. Those who are pathologically disagreeable, like he said, they end up, you know, usually be the ones in, like, that are criminals. Yeah, like they they only think about their needs and 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 everything becomes like a trading game. And it it's not about trying to cooperate. It's try it's about trying to get my way. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not there. Like when I when I do have situations, I am looking to to find a place where we both can be happy, um, where we both can can win in this situation in some type of way. But ultimately, um, I have learned to put my own needs to the forefront as well, because no one knows better for me than me. Mm -hmm. You know, no one's walked in my shoes and lived my life and know me better than me. Mm -hmm. So. Those type of decisions where it comes to employment, where I need to be, what type of job I need to have, how long I need to be at that job, what I need to be building on the side to, you know, like I know those things better than anybody else, better than you, better than anybody else. So I need to make those decisions mm -hmm. executively, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. mm -hmm. what do you think? Yeah. And you tend to be more uh, agreeable. agreeable. Uh, yeah. You know, uh -huh. what, what are some of the things that he mentioned that kind of stood, stood out to you? Just speak the truth, even though it may be hard. That's a big one. You know, yeah. sometimes just speak the truth and, you know, just, I guess, deal with the consequences. Deal I don't with think, the consequences. Yeah. Because sometimes I can be like, oh, my gosh, like, what if this happened? I tend to play all scenarios out in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like and I how don't I play enough scenarios. Right. Like I say I just say it, and whatever the consequences. Come, right, it, which is up. good to have. It's good to have like those opposite yeah. traits because we <laughs> balance each other out. Yeah, because he's super optimistic about everything, <laughs> and I'm like thinking about every negative thing. <laughs> so yeah. it's good to have like that opposing, mm -hmm. those opposing sides. Yeah, yeah it, it helps because with with extreme optimism comes extreme risk mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm more willing to take more risk than she is and sometimes i i will come to her and ask you know what do you think about this instead of me just making the decision <laughs> you know i'll come and i'll ask her what she thinks about it because i know she's going to give she's going to think about it a, a lot more deeply than i do and she's going to ask questions that i didn't even think about so i'll come to her and about purchasing decisions or anything and 
I'll get that perspective. And sometimes I'll be like, I'm going to do it anyway. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I do think about, I'm like, you know what? You make a good point there. Like, <laughs> yeah, let's wait to buy that, you know, $1,500 microphone. We don't need that, <laughs> you know? I think that if you put yourself in the right situation or walk yourself through the right exercises, you can switch some of these other things on as well. But it takes work and, and, and dedication and discipline. I would say, generally speaking, if you want to adapt yourself properly to life, you should find a niche in the environment that corresponds with your temperament. Right? You shouldn't work at cross purposes to your temperament because it's just too damn difficult. But having done that, then you should work on developing the, the skills and, and viewpoints that exist in the space opposite to your personality. Because that's where you're fundamentally underdeveloped. And that way I think you can extend out your temperamental capability across a wider range. And to me that's roughly equivalent as bringing a richer toolkit to each situation. You know, so if you're hyper extroverted, you should probably learn to shut up at parties now and then and listen just to see what's going on, to see if you can manage it, you know. And if you're introverted, well then you should learn how to speak in public and to and to learn how to go to parties without hiding in the corner and saying nothing to anyone. You know, and if you're agreeable, then you need to learn how to be disagreeable so people can't push you around. And if you're disagreeable, you learn you need to learn how to be agreeable so that you're not an evil son of a bitch. So, and the same thing applies even in the conscientious domain. It's like if you're too conscientious, you need to learn to relax and let go a little bit. And if you're unconscientious, it's time like, get out the Google Calendar, man, and start scheduling your day, right? And beat yourself on the back of the head with a stick until you're disciplined enough so that you can actually stick to something for some length of time and not living in absolute squalor, which is something that would characterize someone who's very disorderly, for example, because they just, they don't notice. It, it doesn't bother them. Disorder. It's like it, it, maybe they can see it, but it doesn't have any emotional valence, and so it doesn't have any motivational significance. You know. So the other thing you might want to think about too, if you're choosing a partner, is try not to choose someone who's too distant from you on the temperamental variables, because you're going to have a hard time bridging the gap. You know, it's hard for an introverted person and an extroverted person to coexist. And it's really hard for an orderly person and a disorderly person to coexist because they will drive each other nuts. Why don't you pick up? Why are you so obsessed by it? That's the basic argument. <laughs> so, so it's useful to know about your temperament so that you can negotiate the space with your partner as well. And I don't think you should try to find someone who's exactly the same as you because then you don't have the benefits of the alternative viewpoint. But you've got to watch it, because you may hit irreconcilable differences of various sorts. And I've seen that most particularly among couples who are high and low in openness. That's a rough one. And also high and low in conscientiousness. That's another rough one, because they just cannot see how the other person sees the world at all. Any final thoughts? Oh, no. I think, I think we are in opposite, not extreme opposites, mm -hmm. but I think we do balance it. Yeah. each other out like I'm not a nagger like if you leave yeah. your stuff on the floor I just pick it up and do I wouldn't whatever. I wouldn't um be able to deal with a nagger right like I'm just to me things are not like as big of an issue as people make it yeah you know and I bring my talents to the table just like you bring your talents what you're more yeah. uh what you have strength in and I have a weakness in it's like yeah yeah we balance each other out so absolutely like I, like this house just run, runs like a, a well-oiled machine yeah like you know like you said i have my talents i have my strengths and you have your talents and strengths as well and those two kind of go perfectly together like when you see i'm i'm you know losing patience or a little bit irrit irritable like you pick up and you just you know do your thing and I, I know sometimes that could be hard for you because emotionally you probably be like, I don't know what's wrong. Did I do something? <laughs> did, did I say something? What's wrong? And it's just like, I'm just really hot. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just really like, I yeah. just need to chill for a second. And and it's, it's similar to like, if you want to think of a man, think of like a computer that's been on for like three months and it hasn't been rebooted for a long time. Mm. And it just starts doing weird stuff. You're like, I don't know why this program mm -hmm. is doing it. It's just doing weird stuff. It just won't work properly. And then you restart it and all of a sudden it's working good. Mm -hmm. That's how we are sometimes. Like when we when we need to sit down and just like not think about anything and just just be still, just not even worry about anything, not be not talk, not be bothered, nothing. And that rejuvenates us. That that recharges us. Mm -hmm. But if we're not worried, sometimes like I can tell that that you think something's wrong. So mm -hmm. now that 
adds another stress to me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's like I already was trying to calm down, but now it's like <laughs> now I got to worry about dang. Now I got to act different because she's gonna <laughs> think something's wrong, and this. So now I'm, you know what I'm saying. So it's right. like I just need to be able to look mad. Uh huh. I need to be able to look frustrated, uh-huh. even though I'm. There's nothing frustrating right. me. There's nothing making me mad, but I don't feel like smiling. Yeah. I don't feel like talking. I don't feel like being agreeable or mm-hmm. friendly or anything in that moment. Mm-hmm. So I need to just be by myself and just. Whew. Right. That's why we have that safe word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta use it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I do need to. I do need to use it more often. But sometimes you don't. Yeah. I haven't even processed processed it all the way. Like. I think I think I mean, everything's cool. Yeah, then, no, completely. I completely yeah. understand because I know I have moments, and sometimes I have to think about that. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I have moments too when I'm quiet and I just don't want to be bothered with anyone. Yeah, and I not, forget about that sometimes. Like, why is he? Why is he upset? Like, I'm cheerful all the time, which I'm not. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? like it's nothing yeah, nobody did. Exactly. You know? Yeah, I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. so just part of this, you know, this condition, this Our flesh. Journey. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you just. You know, sometimes you're just not in the mood for right. it, you know. And again, and, we're still different. We're still two different people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We all have our different personalities, our different temperaments, mm-hmm. what um, Jordan was talking about. So, yeah, we're still learning each other. And, of course, we also grow. Yeah. Like, everybody doesn't stay the same. So, we were 24 when we met each other. Right. Now we're, right. like, 30-something. <laughs> <Y'all age>. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, now we're 30-something. And, of course, we've grown over the years. Like, our yeah. mindset is different. So, of course, we, it's, it's like a continuing cycle of yeah. getting to know each other and growing with each other and learning to communicate and doing A, B, C, and D. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's awesome. I do, like how he challenges people. Mm -hmm. You know, he says, if you're agreeable, try to be a little more disagreeable so you're not pushed over. Right. If you're disagreeable, (laughs) try not to be an asshole. Right. (laughs) You know, I like that because it challenges you to not just be like, this is just who I am. Right. You know, it's Uh like, no, stretch yourself so you could be a little bit more socially flexible. Right. And that you won't, for an agreeable person, you won't get pushed over. And that's so scary to me. Like, (sighs) Yeah, I gotta step outside my box. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? <laughs> you know, and for him, he, he you know, he's like, oh, 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 let's do okay. It. All right, uh, he let's says to do this. Uh-huh. Okay, this right. is the Okay, let's do it. Let's implement it I'll right now. And I'm like, <laughs> heart is beating fast. Like, oh my gosh, what do you mean? Oh, oh, um, 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 they let us do um YouTube live. Okay, let's do it today. Right. Like, meanwhile, I'm sweating bullets. Like, boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Are you okay? Yes. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> that balance because I, I stretch you in that Yeah, in that you way, definitely do. You, you know? definitely do. And you stretch me in, in a way of being able to slow down and listen and to um, have empathy towards your, your feelings and things of that sort. Like, because naturally I just wouldn't care. Like, right. I would yeah. just like, not care. But like knowing that I want to have a healthy relationship, I want you to be happy. Mm. It. I had to step outside of that that comfort zone of mm-hmm. not caring about you know your feelings or not caring about how things make you feel, and slow down, listen, pay attention, mm-hmm. you know, uh, do things to make you smile mm-hmm. and you know things like that. That kind of like oh everything is okay. Yeah. Yes, everything's okay. I just told you that. Okay, now back to what I was doing. Right. <laughs> 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 it is good just to know like the different characteristics between a female and male. I like mm-hmm. and some sometimes we like to think that the guys um view the world as we do. Right. And they view it completely different. Completely different. So it's like good having those conversations like okay, how would you react in this situation or how, what is it like <laughs> yeah. as far as being a guy and how would you, you know, um see this particular situation yeah and it always be like completely different and like we have to explain to one another like oh this is what she's saying yeah in this particular moment oh i didn't know that oh my <laughs> gosh mind blown you know yeah. so and for for men we we tend to be more logical mm-hmm. and and women tend to be more emotional mm-hmm. and that doesn't mean that we're not we don't have emotions right. and they don't have logic what it means is if i say everything is okay but i say it like everything is okay Mm -hmm. that doesn't make her feel like everything is okay Mm -hmm. so even though i'm saying that and even though things may be okay Mm -hmm. she doesn't feel like everything is okay so she's she's not gonna really take your words right like and in one way is projection because i know when i say everything's okay or i'm fine i'm really not fine right 
So if you're saying everything's okay, I'm fine. It's like, no, he's not fine because yeah. I'm viewing it in a way that I will feel. Yeah. You know, so it's I, just learning to trust his word, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's okay. Don't add more to it. Don't take right. away. Don't dissect it. Don't unpack it. Just leave it. <laughs> just let it be. Yeah. It goes with being disagreeable. Like, I don't have a, a problem saying speaking my mind. Right. So you shouldn't question it because I'm going to speak right. my mind. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Oh man! So you just have to rely. Like this is how he is, uh -huh. you know. So this is how he he is. Yeah. So yeah, trust. Like him. if I if I say I'm okay and I sound irritated, the irritation is because you're asking you're me asking me if <laughs> everything is okay. If you're like, <laughs> walking on eggshells. <laughs> Do I ask him? Do I not? Am I being considerate? No. Okay. It's so like, funny. I told you everything right, is so crazy. Like, clearly everything. not. No, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> I don't yell at him. No, anybody. no, no. But yeah, um, thank y'all for tuning in. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Make sure you like, share, um, comment, and subscribe. Yep. All of that good stuff. Um, we appreciate y'all. God bless. Bye.